Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc, and I've got a critical point that I want to make that has just become an epiphany on me in me as I discuss with some of the other experts and mentors in my field the cause and management of cardiovascular disease. And one of the crucial things that we do in our office is we do CAC scores all the time, and it's a primary screening tool. Yet the majority of doctors out there, primary care doctors, cardiologists, number one, don't believe in uh, CAC scores as a, as a routine screening tool. And secondly, they really are very aggressive about putting people on statins because of elevated cholesterol without even knowing what their cardiovascular risk is, assuming that cholesterol is your primary risk. Here's historically why this is the case. And it's been an epiphany talking to colleagues and friends of mine. When we originally became concerned with cardiovascular disease, it was in the 1940s and 50s when we saw a, an epidemic of cardiovascular disease primarily caused by nicotine. In fact, the uh, big study looking at that was Ansel Keys in 1957, blaming fat instead of nicotine. And the American College of Cardiologists was initially uh, created in 1957. So around that time, the majority of cardiovascular disease occurred in people who smoked majority of people are eating high fat, low carbohydrate, lower carbohydrate diets. And the interesting thing is this, that the majority of people that had cardiovascular disease before their heart attack during the high smoking era were symptomatic. Very early on, they would have angina pectoris, shortness of breath. They'd have angina pectoris. They'd have chest pain. They'd have symptoms that would then trigger the cardiologist to go ahead and study them and study them with a heart cath and do that test. So the cardiologists have been taught and have a memory of symptoms. And one of the biggest frustrations for me when I send a patient to a cardiologist with a high CAC score, they said, ah, nothing to do here but take a statin because you're asymptomatic. Well, here's the big frustration for me and the big issue is that the primary causative agent of cardiovascular disease has changed a lot over the past 70 years. And we have to take this into consideration in terms of changing our thinking. Dr. Lily Johnson, a vascular surgeon um, that I went to a talk about at, in the Boca uh, Low Carb meeting, which was fabulous. In her talk, and she was talking about women and cardiovascular disease, she reports currently a 64% silent MI, silent heart attack in females with hyperglycemia. So when your blood sugars are elevated, you typically have a silent heart attack. What does silent mean? It means you don't have symptoms. You don't have chest pain. You don't have shortness of breath. Suddenly you have a heart attack and you didn't expect it. And nobody knew. And she also reports that one in three women in America currently will die of cardiovascular disease. I've previously reported one in four, but one in three, one third of women are going to die of a heart attack, the majority of which are going to die silently. The angina pectoris, the, the chest pain, is more related to nicotine use and not hyperglycemia. And that may be a factor of nicotine itself in that nicotine is a vasoconstrictor. It tightens blood vessels. And when your blood vessels tighten, flow through those vessels is somewhat restricted, not by necessarily just by plaque, but by that constrictive narrowing that makes the ischemic effect before a heart attack more prevalent. So I suspect that the symptomatic heart disease related to nicotine use is the old way that we used to screen. Oh, you don't have chest pain, you're okay. You're not at a critical level. But now we don't know whether you're at a critical level or not because the heart attacks are silent. When hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugar, causes inflammation, it doesn't create vasoconstriction. So you suddenly have a heart attack when the plaque reaches a critical point, rather than at a sign of narrowing of the blood vessel plus plaque from nicotine. So therefore, the importance of screening using a coronary artery calcium score, an objective test of plaque, is so much more important in the current era. And currently, my recommendation is for everybody, every human, no matter how healthy you think you are, to get a CAC score screening test at the age of 40. And then we have a response mechanism based on your CAC score after that in terms of follow up. But most cardiologists currently still wait for symptoms before screening. And this is a fault of the 
that is a fault that is allowing more and more people to die or be on statins without knowing in the current silent MI era. You know, as a young doctor, I saw angina a lot. I saw chest pain and shortness of breath, and we were taught about that because we were dealing with smokers. Yeah, I'm that old. But even then, we were taught, even in that smoking era, we were taught that diabetics had silent MIs. Everybody knows a diabetic has a silent MI. But when we blame cholesterol for heart disease, not sugar, we forget about that. We forget about our training. But everybody has been taught smoking angina pectoris, diabetes, ha diabetics have silent heart attacks. You know, while the CAC score is not perfect, it is currently the most ubiquitously available, inexpensive screening tool that we currently have. So instead of, or in addition to getting your lipids measured, get a darn CAC score, insist on it, and educate your physician that, hey, I don't want to have a silent heart attack at the age of 40. So on another clinical side note, our dietitian very often does analytics of what patients eat at entry point into our practice. And the overwhelming majority of our newbie patients who haven't yet changed their diet on a standard American diet, the overwhelming majority of patients on a, on a uh, um, standard American diet are eating over 80% of their total calories in the form of carbohydrates. Total carbohydrate can't in the diet as a fraction of the diet is over 80% of what they're eating. Yet, almost all of those patients are also consuming a high fraction of their fat as seed oils. But if you look at the total fat calories, including these seed oils, it's typically less than 10% on the standard American diet. So you've got 80 plus percent carbohydrates, less than 10% of all told fats, of which a fraction is seed oils. So while I think seed oils are an important contributor, they certainly are a contributor to cardiovascular disease, we cannot prioritize seed oils over carbohydrates. Because if you're also consuming 80% um, of your diet as, as, as carbohydrates, to exclude chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption and carb addiction from the discussion of cardiovascular disease is as naive as blaming cholesterol for cardiovascular disease. And I just, I'm having a rant right now because this is happening in a discussion with some of my learned colleagues. And I had that epiphany about a transformation in the causative agent of CVD. And therefore we need to change our screening and our evaluation of those patients because we have to anticipate silent heart attacks by getting a CAC score. We cannot wait for them to be symptomatic. So think this through. I hope you have, the, if you're a physician, if you're a practitioner caring for patients, have that epiphany. Get the CAC score. And maybe if you're a patient who has had a positive CAC score, but you do not have uh, symptoms, bring this point up to your cardiologist because they know that diabetics have silent heart attacks. So let them know that that is the concern so that they get the darn testing done that tells us preemptively before the heart attack that you've got a problem. Let's treat you before the heart attack, not afterwards. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this has helped you tremendously from a thinking and a mindset perspective as a practitioner and as a patient.